The business of the shortest parliament since 1974 is nearly done. It all ends at midnight on 2 May, just 25 days before its second anniversary. In an unnecessary election imposed on a reluctant country by a prime minister who disguises her political objective of a greatly enlarged majority behind a spurious narrative of damaging division, it is important, as the campaign progresses, to bear in mind Theresa May's real purpose, to establish herself as the unchallenged interpreter of Brexit. There was something of this ruthlessness in this afternoon's final Prime Minister's question time. Behind the rowdiness and the fuzzy sentimentality of a final session, Mrs. May was rarely rattled and never surprising. In the set-piece exchange with the Labour leader, the words strong, strength, and stability featured in every answer. She and Jeremy Corbyn operated on entirely separate tracks. He spattering her with questions on the NHS, taxes, pensions and the housing crisis, all of which she ignored in order to launch her prepared attacks. MPS are often, mostly unfairly, treated with derision. It is worth remembering that government was the better for some of those who are retiring. The former Labour cabinet minister Ellen Johnson, the effective conservative chair of the Treasury Committee, Andrew Tyree, and the Labour chair of the Business Committee, Ian Lavery. Fiona McTaggart has been a tireless defender of women's rights. Even Douglas Carswell's idiosyncratic desertion of the Tories for UKIP, a party where he never really belonged, will have its place in history. It was not a good sign for Labour. Some of its MPs are leaving openly expressing dissatisfaction with the leadership. Some Conservatives, like the one-time Social Services Secretary Peter Lilly, and the right-wing backbencher Gerald Howarth, go having succeeded in their life's work to get Britain out of Europe. These are MPs whose uncompromising Euroscepticism has been the stuff of nightmares. Successive party leaders, they are the people David Cameron may have had in mind when he talked optimistically yesterday about the referendum taking the poison out of politics. Prime Minister's questions is a tribal activity much more important. The morale of MPs at Westminster than it is. The country beyond. The performances that work in the small confrontational chamber of the commons are no guarantee of campaigning success. As the fate of opposition leaders like William Hague or even David Cameron shows. But there are two points to take away from the final session of this parliament. The first was the subdued mood among Labour backbenchers all too gloomily aware of what the current polls indicate about their own chances of being back on the green benches in a couple of months time. Not since 2001 has an election campaign begun with the government so confident of success, nor an opposition so resigned to defeat. The second is that it is quite possible to wrong foot Theresa May. Mr. Corbyn did it in February when he read out leaked text exchanges between the leader of Surrey Council and officials in the Department for Communities and local government exposing a sweetheart deal over spending to avert a local referendum. Today the SNP leader, Angus Robertson minus as he often does minus had her on the back foot over the triple lock on pensions. It may well be that for the progressive cause, this campaign will be an exercise in damage limitation. The demands a relentless determination to hold Theresa May and her party to account for what they have done, and what they intend to do.